Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with the marvelous May installment of In Defense Of. Uh, we'll be focusing on the 2003 Daredevil film, which is going to be a bit of an uphill battle. A um, couple of disclaimers right off the bat. One, the Netflix series is infinitely better. If you want a good, quality, live-action interpretation of the Daredevil character, watch the Netflix series, if you haven't already. Uh, second, I'll, I am focusing on the director's cut of the movie, not the theatrical cut, because I enjoy the director's cut better. And I've seen the director's cut more than the, the theatrical cut. That being said, let's move on to the meat of the video. First off, what's good in this movie? Uh, Michael Clark Duncan's portrayal of the Kingpin. Uh, Lake Michael Clark Duncan was a good, damn good actor. And... I was a bit skeptical about him playing the role, but uh, he pulled it off. He, he had the physical presence, and he just had all the presence that was needed for an excellent portrayal of the character at the time. Uh, when he spoke, it, when he gave an order, you knew that order had to be followed. Um, next up, Colin Farrell's portrayal of Bullseye. Um, yeah, it was... It was kind of tongue in cheek, um, and to be perfectly honest, the the light quote unquote lighthearted or comic comical scenes with him are pretty much the only comical scenes in the movie that actually work. Um, his uh, and also that look with the the bullseye scar on his forehead was you know pretty cool, uh, and it gave. You, know, there, you got some really excellent moments showing just, you know, how good he is. <laughs> uh, another good thing was the fact that uh, the plot took a good deal of inspiration from uh, Frank Miller's run on the Co Daredevil comic book from the 80s. Um, then, uh, also, the cameos. Uh, for, of course, Stan Lee, because, well... It's a, it was a Marvel movie. Well, a Marvel movie featuring a character he created. Uh, Kevin Smith as the uh, assistant uh, coroner Jack Kirby. Nice little double whammy there. And of course, Frank Miller himself in a very brief role as one of Bullseye's victims. Uh, and finally also, uh, Joe Pantoliano as Ben Urich. Uh, I really liked Pantoliano as Ben Urich, and to be perfectly honest, his performance of the, of the role really, really made me wish that uh, this had been a Sony movie as opposed to a Fox film because I would have loved to have seen uh, Pantoliano's Yurik and uh, J.K. Simmons' uh, J. Jonah Jameson buttheads. That just would have been fun to watch. Now, the bad. Um, Jennifer Garner's Elektra. She just... From the neck down, she actually kind of had the, the the look. But uh, this is the physical portion of it. But uh, it, from, you know, the neck up, it's just kind of, nope, not doing it. Um, Performance-wise, it's just flat. Um, I'm surprised that her and Ben Affleck are married after this, because... It, it, it didn't seem like she was really meshing with anybody. Um, one, one perk, just just with the inclusion of Electra, was a recreation of uh, her iconic death scene at, Bull, at the hands of Bullseye. Um, but that's like the only good thing with, of her, with her in the movie, really. Uh, John Favreau is Foggy Nelson. Um, he was poorly done comic relief um, every scene with Foggy pretty much is very light hearted he's always got a joke it seems uh, hell the uh, the court sequence that was uh, cut from the theatrical cut and restored to the director's cut the only re it's really not good because you've got all this 
you know, oh, let's see how you know, bad a lawyer Foggy Nelson really is, and uh, it just, oh. The only redeeming factor of that entire plot, of that entire subplot, is that it does give the uh, a reason to uh, discover that the Wesley Owen Welch character is linked to, or is guilty of a crime, and that subsequently that he is linked to the Kingpin. Um, Ben Affleck's hair. Yeah, I know. Hair, not a big deal, right? Well, the thing of it is, Matt Murdock's supposed to be a redhead. Um, you know, you know, redhead, ginger, whatever, however you want to put it. Ben Affleck's hair looked like somebody who has black hair and put red dye in it. And, that re and not exactly good red dye. <laughs> And it, it just, it, it's really jarring. It, it's almost enough to really just kind of drag you out of the movie. Um, the plot does feel kind of rushed. Um, also, the, there was, the, it seemed like the script itself couldn't decide if it wanted to be a dark and brooding or fun and lighthearted, and it, which ended up coming up, making it come off totally as Tonally, not totally, tonally, as a, just a jumbled mess sometimes. Uh, now, what there are some things that are just kind of middle of the road on. You know, it's not, it's not a really, it's not something I would say is a great thing in the movie, but not a bad thing either. Um, ben Affleck as Daredevil, uh, aside from the hair, he he did a decent job with the character. Uh, I've seen worse portrayals of comic book characters, though he probably wasn't the best choice for the role, and it. it it was kind of, it's fairly obvious they pretty much said, you know, oh, Ben Affleck, you're, you're a big star, you're interested in doing this? Okay, yeah, you, you've got the role. The costume. Um, red leather just... Mm, uh, however, this is, this is kind of forgivable because, hell, Sony did black leather for the X, or not Sony. Fox did black leather for the X Men, and the X Men movies were a success. So it was kind of a hey, this worked. So why won't it work the, later? Um, a lot of the brute, a lot, a lot of the plot in general seems to be very by the numbers, um, and sometimes it works. You know, I mean the origin stuff. Um, it's you know, hey, his dad. He gets blind, or him and his dad are, you know, are, you know, hurting for money. Dad's a boxer. Oh, look, dad's now working for the mob as well. Matt gets blinded. He swears he's not working for the mob anymore. Goes back to boxing. Oh, look, he's been, fights have been, have been thrown for him. And now he's got to throw one himself. And it just... It just goes downhill. It, it's it's a very by the numbers kind of thing. Um, the soundtrack. Um, it's more than a little distracting at times. Uh, once again, this is also one of those forgivable, slightly forgivable things, and it, this is partially because of the point in time the movie came out um, there were certain philosophy about, about marketing, marketing movies that uh, and ways to cross pollinate basically with uh, marketing uh, and a soundtrack full of quote unquote hip new artists was a great way to get the that bump from MTV now, not so much, but then there's some kind of thing. The final verdict. Um, Daredevil is not like, Avengers, Dark Knight, X-Men too good. But at the same time, it's not Batman and Robin, X-Men 3, Electra bad. 
Uh, it does still fall in the lower tier of uh, ranked comic book movies, but there are worse ones out there. Much worse ones. Uh, anyway, that's that's all I got for this week. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday with the Weekly TV Roundup. Um, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to Facebook and Twitter are in the description down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off. Remember, live long, rock